Munchies, welcome to the channel. If you're new, I'm Alicia and I am stoked you're here. Today I will be testing a bunch of different protein bars and giving you my thoughts on taste and health. But of course, that is going to mean a lot of disclaimers because health is relative and what I choose might not be what you would choose and that is totally allowed. So. Truth be told, I don't eat protein bars anymore. Truth be told, most people don't need to eat protein bars. Truth be told, most people think they need more protein than they probably do. And truth be told, the quality of protein in most protein bars isn't really what I wanna put in my body for fuel. I would rather consume whole foods. There are going to be a lot of truths to be told in this video, but remember, take what you want, leave what you don't. There is a lot of information to navigate. First, you have to know why you're eating a protein bar. Most of us don't need as much protein as we've been told. It is not hard to get enough protein from regular whole food sources. Now, exercise breaks down muscle protein. So consuming protein after the workout gives our bodies amino acids to repair and rebuild those proteins, as well as essentially the building blocks to build new muscle. So if you are looking for something to specifically fuel your recovery after a workout, a protein bar could be a convenient option. But remember, you don't not benefit from the workout if you don't eat after it. You still did it and your body still appreciates it. A lot of people think that they need a protein bar after and they end up eating candy in disguise and essentially negate all the work that they just did. They would be better off eating nothing than the candy bar. There are hundreds of bars, so my approach to this video was simply, hmm, hmm, what would I eat? Now, this video is not sponsored. I went to about five stores and just picked out the ones that I thought I might actually consider including in my diet or recommending to someone else based on the stats. These choices are some of the cleaner ones I could find, but I will say that I won't actually eat all of these, although I will taste them for you today. But first, let me tell you my protein rules. Number one, protein to calorie ratio. It is a protein bar after all. A lot of bars say protein on the wrapper, and then there's like 10 grams of protein or less, come on. Most people, depends on who you ask of course, suggest 20 to 40 grams for post-workout. For some, that's probably more than we need. For protein, if about 30% of the total calories of the bar can be from protein, that is great for me. It can't always happen when adhering to all of my other rules though, something's gotta give. Two is carb count. So carbs are also good post-workout. Carbs combined with protein can maximize protein and glycogen synthesis. The amount of carbs that you will want will vary based on the type of exercise you do and your body, of course. An endurance athlete like a runner or a swimmer might need more carbs than someone doing weightlifting. But maybe not, it depends on what type of weightlifting you're doing. If you're not working out as often, you probably need less carbs for that recovery. So if you're a regular person like me, just wanting a post-workout bar, I want carbs to be reasonable. I don't wanna consume a piece of cake, but I recognize that some carbs will help with my recovery. If your goal is to lose weight, you may want to consume and need to consume less carbs. May. Three, less fat. For post-workout specifically, now don't get me wrong, fat is great. I am a huge fan of eating a diet higher in healthy dietary fat. But for post-workout, a lot of times, it's recommended to have less fat because it can slow down the absorption of your post-workout meal or bar or whatever. Now, it's not necessarily going to inhibit the benefits, but if I can limit the fat I eat after exercise, I do. Also, I want any fat that is in the bar to come from healthy, natural sources. Four, low sugar. Carbs are okay. Sugar I try to stay away from, especially added sugar. I think sugar being low is more important than calories or carbs being too high. Five, fiber and net carbs. Fiber is good, so sure, look for more. But most bars these days use fake fiber sources like IMOs, isomaltooligosaccharides, inulin or chicory root fiber, soluble corn fiber, etc. These are sneaky because they do add fiber, but they aren't whole foods. They should not be our main source of fiber. And for a lot of people, they cause digestion issues. And especially for IMO fiber, there have been studies showing that there is not a universal blood sugar response, meaning that some people do digest the carbs, even though they're supposed to be indigestible. Net carbs are carbs minus fiber. Some people like to think that only net carbs count. I don't recommend this approach. Carbs are carbs, and fake fiber is not going to be processed like it would with whole foods. I'm not saying that you should avoid it completely, and if you don't have the digestive distress, then it might be fine for you, but don't use it as your main fiber source, and don't think that the calories or carbs don't count. 
Six ingredients. So for me, no aspartame. I don't personally like to consume sucralose either. Some of these bars do have sucralose. They would not be a part of my regular diet. I would go for stevia, monk fruit, or erythritol. You can check out my sweeteners 101 video for more on that. I also prefer dairy-free because dairy doesn't love me, uh, but whey is dairy, so it's hard to avoid for a lot of bars. We'll talk about that more. Seven, complete proteins. So not all bars contain complete proteins. I'm going to touch on the importance of this. And number eight, of course, taste. And let's do it. So I did a video years ago and it needed an update because there are so many new bars out there. I saw a few I was excited about, two of which were these collagen based bars. The Bulletproof Collagen Bar Apple Pie Flavor and the Primal Kitchen Coconut Cashew Collagen Bar. These bars have pretty clean ingredients compared to mainstream bars. Downside, they only have 12 to 13 grams of protein and contain 12 grams of fat. So this is higher in fat and lower in protein than I'd want for post-workout. But the main downside and reason I would not recommend this for post-workout specifically is it's a collagen based bar. I might say this could be a snack, although I try not to turn to bars for snacks, uh, but not for a post-workout bar. So stay with me for a quick educational detour. Collagen is a type of protein our bodies produce naturally, but we can also get it from supplements. And it's made from bones, skin, and cartilage of animals and fish. It has become really popular lately, and rightfully so, because collagen makes up about 30% of the proteins within the human body. It's great for joint health, complexion, and longevity, skin, hair, nails, etc. The catch is collagen is not a complete protein, meaning it doesn't contain all of the essential amino acids. There are 20 different amino acids that can form a protein and nine that the body can't produce on its own. That's why they are essential. We have to eat them because we can't make them ourselves. Complete proteins can come from animal and plant sources. So whey and egg protein are two complete animal forms of protein, for instance, and hemp and soy are complete plant-based proteins. Collagen, however, only contains eight of the nine essential amino acids. Now, that doesn't mean it's not worth consuming. I have collagen every morning in my coffee, but for the purposes of the protein bar, like I mentioned for hashtag gains, I want a complete protein option. So let's give them a try. All right. Hmm. Okay. The bulletproof one is crumbly and soft. It also melts in your mouth. It actually does taste like apple pie and not like an artificial flavor, probably because it contains actual apples. I can definitely taste the cashew butter. It tastes clean, I like it. Okay, a Primal Kitchen one is very chewy. It's not as sweet, which I prefer. I think a lot of times protein bars are too sweet and I don't love the sweetenery taste a lot of them have, but this one I cannot taste it, which is nice. It tastes like coconut, but it's sticking to my teeth a little too much. Okay, next up are these Rise Bars, the simplest protein bar, and I think that is a fair claim because I cannot believe these ingredients. Almonds, honey, and whey in the regular one, and cashews, coconut nectar, pea protein, and lemon extract in the vegan option. So it couldn't get much cleaner than that, which I love. The vegan one has 15 grams of protein. It is harder to get as much protein from plant-based sources, so that's expected. But pea protein is a good choice because it is a complete protein. It has all of the essential amino acids. Not all plant sources are like that. Rice protein, for instance, is not a complete protein. So these have good levels of protein and carbs. The main downside is they are higher in fat, which I prefer to keep lower post-workout, but I'll take the fat because it's from a healthy source like almonds. So it's a win. All right. The almond honey tastes like almonds and honey. Big surprise. What is a surprise is that it actually doesn't taste protein-y. It's smooth and creamy and Oh man, I just love how few ingredients it has. I would eat this bar. Mm, okay, vegan lemon cashew. It's soft and smooth. I like the lemon flavor a lot. It is a bit chalky from the pea protein. It's gonna be the case with almost any pea protein bar or powder, unfortunately. These also do have a little bit more sugar, 12 to 13 grams. It's a little high for me, but knowing what the ingredients are is a good sign. Okay. <laughs> okay, Nugo bars are next. They are noted as whole foods, and I do love the ingredients lists, short and sweet. The protein is all coming from egg whites, which I much prefer to whey or any other processed source of protein. That being said, without 
supplementation of the protein, they are going to have less of it. So 12 to 14 grams. They are lower in fat, which is nice, but the total sugar adds up even though the added sugar is zero because the first ingredient is dates. So it's a clean bar, but it could have more protein and less total sugar to fit the bill. All right, let's try peanut butter first. Okay, peanut butter is very sticky. I hate when it gets stuck on my teeth. It's nutty, sort of like a Lara bar, but with only nuts and no dried fruit. <laughs> it's very oily, super oily. Sticks to my teeth too much. My jaw gets tired trying to chew it. A little less oily, still very chewy. Better, but not my favorite. I don't think I would eat either of these regularly. Mmm. Jimmy! Wake it up! Clean protein bar is next. It, <laughs> it caught my eye at Walgreens, believe it or not, because it says clean. Also, white chocolate cafe latte flavor. I love white chocolate. Is it too good to be true? Fat isn't too high, carbs, sugar, and added sugar are all pretty reasonable, and over 20 grams of protein. I was also surprised to see the ingredients list isn't as long or overwhelming as I would have thought. I will say, I don't love soy protein crisps as an ingredient. I am not a huge fan of processed soy. I don't love seeing vegetable glycerin or palm oil, but it could be worse. All right, it has like a, a pretty icing on top. Crunchy. It tastes like a dense Rice Krispie treat. Honestly, it tastes like peanut butter. I don't really get white chocolate and I don't really get coffee much, but it doesn't taste like a regular protein bar because of that crispiness. It's okay, it's okay. I think I'd be over it after a few bites. I don't think I could eat the whole thing. So part of my issue with bars like these is also the emotional component with my relationship with food. I have done so much work to develop a healthy relationship with whole foods. Sometimes I think eating bars like this do more harm to that relationship than good. They're candy bars in disguise. I mean, look at the icing on this. And so it's like I'm trying to convince myself that it's not dessert and doing my body good. Over time, my approach has evolved to eat whole foods most of the time. And if I really want an actual cookie, I just eat it instead of trying to substitute with something that's super processed. But I know that that's not everyone's approach, which is totally allowed. Quest bars, chocolate chip cookie dough. So. These are some of the cleaner process bars you'll find. They have solid stats with the fat, carbs, and protein. They use erythritol and stevia, which I prefer. Some flavors do use sucralose and some don't, which is a bummer for me personally, but whatever. This could be a solid choice, but there's still a compromise being made as there has been with all of these, at least for my personal protein bar rules. It tastes very sweet too much sweetener for me, and it does taste artificial and a bit processed. It's more like a candy bar, but I'm not sure cookie dough is how I would describe it. I honestly, I used to be a big Quest Bar fan before they changed the formula from IMO fiber to corn fiber. That being said, I do respect that they made the change because I know that they did it to address the fact that those studies were coming out showing that IMO fiber didn't have a universal blood sugar response and they wanted to be sure that their product was affecting people's bodies as they claimed. So I totally respect the change, but I miss the taste of the old bars because this doesn't taste as good to me. One bars are similar to Quest in terms of ingredients. They do use the IMO fiber instead of corn, which does taste better in my opinion, but I don't love the idea of consuming it as much. So studies have shown that IMO fiber can actually generate a glycemic response that is more substantial than regular table sugar. The question is, does it depend on the bar, the company, and the type of IMO fiber they're using, or does it depend on the person? Experts say it really depends on how the fiber is made, which is of course not going to be on the ingredients list. I can't know looking at the label, and my feeling is, if it's this complicated to figure out, do I really want it? Anyway, the regular one bar and the one basics bar are similar, but the basics version is a tad cleaner. Hmm. So this basic cookie dough bar, it tastes more like cookie dough than the Quest one. And I think it tastes less artificial and I think it's better than the Quest bar. It's doughier, it's less plasticky. The blueberry one, I've tasted it before. Mm, it's so good. It's like a Pop-Tart. I mean, it's the best one I've had today and probably will be the best one. It's just too bad that they use IMO fiber and sucralose. I can taste the protein, but the tartness of the berry flavor really helps to balance out the sweetness. They both have vegetable glycerin, but the basics does use sunflower lecithin. It's not my favorite, but it's better than soy lecithin, which the other one uses. And the basics one uses stevia versus the regular, which uses sucralose. So small changes, but I would honestly pick the basics over the regular because of those ingredients, even though, man, 
the blueberry cobbler one tastes really good. Okay, I do have to quickly stop and just remind you to press subscribe to the channel if you want more videos like this. Hit that bell so that you can be notified and please let me know what you would like to see so that I can do the research and get that out for you. No cow bars are next. So these used to be called D's Naturals, I think. This is a vegan bar and it's actually pretty solid with ingredients and stats. It's lower sugar and fat, over 20 grams of protein. It is a high fiber bar because it's IMO fiber. But the protein blend is pea and rice protein. So there are complete proteins in this vegan bar and the other ingredients aren't bad. Erythritol, stevia, and monk root sweetener, which is preferred for me personally. I'd say the main downside is the IMO fiber for me, but it's just everywhere these days in protein bars, which is a big reason that I've stopped trying to include them in my diet. First, let's try the vanilla caramel. Okay, it's like biting into, it's like biting into a piece of chalk. Ooh, ooh. It's the pea protein. I just don't know if anything can be done about it because it's the nature of pea protein. There's a mild caramelly flavor, but honestly, the texture is just making me think that there's dirt in my mouth. How about chocolate peanut butter? It's a little bit better. I think the peanut butter helps with the chalkiness a little. It's a little bit more pleasant, but it's not my favorite. I couldn't eat the whole thing. <coughs> so it was cool to find these next ones by Julian's Bakery. There seem to be three different ones, but it's all the same brand. So the Primal Thin variation is a whey protein bar. This is a sweet cream flavor. There are only four ingredients. Organic grass-fed whey, always a plus to see grass-fed and organic. Organic digestive resistant prebiotic tapioca fiber, <laughs> sunflower butter, and monk fruit. Nice, except what is organic digestive resistant prebiotic tapioca fiber? So tapioca fiber is a toughie because it can be the same thing and labeled differently. Sometimes tapioca fiber is actually IMO fiber. So I don't wanna completely revisit IMO fiber again here, it's your choice to make, but a lot of experts claim that tapioca fiber and starch, even though it comes from the cassava plant, is essentially empty calories without nutrients and in some senses, maybe worse than sugar. Hmm, very chewy. It actually tastes like sweet cream in flavor. That's subtle. I like the flavor, actually. I don't love the texture. It's too chewy and sticky and sort of hard. Meh. The paleo variation uses egg white powder as the protein source. I love it. I much prefer that to whey, but it still contains the tapioca fiber. This one also has organic donut flavor, which I thought was funny. It makes it sound as if the organic donut flavor was like growing out of the ground. Uh, and it's sweetened with monk fruit. Also very chewy. The donut flavor, it tastes like more like vanilla and maple. It's natural, but it does sort of taste artificial or like extracty in the aftertaste. I like the ingredients a little more, but I'm not about the taste. And the Pegan version, Pegan is supposed to be like paleo plus vegan if you aren't familiar. It uses organic pumpkin seed protein as the base. Neat, but also tricky. So pumpkin seeds actually are a complete source of plant protein, but they are low in some of the essential amino acids. So they don't actually provide a complete source of protein in every bite. Hmm, does that make sense? It also contains the tapioca fiber. This is vanilla cinnamon. It's a little sweeter than the sweet cream one. I don't like I don't like it when it's too sweet, so it's a little much for me. It tastes stronger. It also tastes more fake. The pumpkin seed protein, though, it's not as chalky as the pea protein. It's a little easier to swallow, literally, but I don't think I'd eat it regularly. At the end of the day, these companies want you to buy their bars. They are gonna put whatever they need on the label to convince you that it's what you want and need. Oh, you realize you don't wanna consume IMO fiber? We'll just call it organic prebiotic tapioca fiber instead and even include the health claim that it's now with probiotics and prebiotics on the label to convince you that it's what you want even though it's the same thing and really isn't doing you any good. Now, listen guys, I am not here to tell you to eat or not eat these. I don't care what you eat, but I get asked all the time, is this bar or that bar healthy? And the truth is, it depends on you and what you want. I don't wanna eat more processed foods and protein bars, they don't grow on trees, they're processed. I'm not saying that you can't eat them or that they're all bad, but you've gotta weigh it out based on your goals and what you wanna put into your body and you know how frequently you want to include them. Again, truth be told, most of us don't need that much protein and we likely don't need protein bars to meet our intake. They are just a convenience. So what do I actually eat? 
Honestly, probably none of those. I would prefer a bar that is actually just meat, which are becoming more popular. So you've still got to read the label, but you likely won't find IMO fiber or tapioca fiber in them. Meat bars won't have as much protein as a protein bar, actually. They'll be moderate in fat and significantly lower in carbs. There will be very little sugar, but check to make sure because some do contain added sugar. The main thing to watch out for is sodium. Now, sodium isn't gonna kill you, or at least most of us, if we're eating mostly whole foods diet, we don't need to be overly concerned about sodium if we don't have any pre-existing health issues, but it can add up quickly with these bars. If I actually wanted a post-workout snack with a bar, I would go for one of these meat bars and a convenient piece of fruit for the carbs, like an apple, a banana, some grapes, berries, rather than the protein bar. So the quality of flavor and texture varies based on the brand of the meat bar, um, but I think I would have to save that for a whole other video. Okay, so that is the protein bar video. I know, I suck at telling you exactly what you wanna hear, but I just refuse to tell you what to eat because the fact is we're all different. We have different needs, preferences, goals, and bodies, and I want you to be able to decide what's right for you without having to blindly listen to what an internet person is telling you to do. That is what gives you power and control and freedom with food and with your healthy lifestyle. Education is power. Spread the word and share the video if you learned something, I really appreciate it. I will be back next week with a new episode and remember, it's all a matter of mind over munch.